kicking this off, a uh, little country level update. Um, a lot is happening in the Netherlands, which is the country we're talking about. Uh, I picked up four topics um, to give you an idea of where we are. Um, first of which, uh, Met Mai. There's no good word for that in English. People who are here, sorry, before the break, uh, will have seen this part. Uh, Met Mai is about creating a you know, PHR environment uh, without actually developing a PHR uh, and making sure that the patient uh, has access to the same information that the care provider has. And uh, if, if everything goes right, also put him in a position where he can actually uh, speak up to his doctor uh, with information he has that the doctor does not have yet, such as, I'm not taking this particular medication at this point in time, although you say that I am. Um, so the main task of MedMai is to promote the digital exchange of personal health data uh, between the patients and professionals, and for that you need trust. Uh, you're not going to use it if you don't think it's safe enough to use it, if you don't think your privacy is kept enough. The doctor is not going to be on it if he thinks that uh, nothing is sacred anymore in his particular file of the, uh, of the patient. Uh, for example, he might have some specific notes that he doesn't want the patient to see. Um, so this is our, our next uh, task. Um, MetMai um, is not a network in itself. It, it leverages existing uh, networks, uh, one of which is the national spine uh, that it needs to, be uh, needs to be able to talk to. Uh, this particular picture is way too complicated to, uh, uh, to look at right, right here. Uh, but just to give you an idea, on the left hand side you have the patient domain where MetMai is. On the right hand side you have the healthcare uh, provider domain. Um, and this little green box thingy gateway over here and gateway over there is where uh, the national spine uh, could live and will live. Uh, that's where the patient domain touches base with uh, the healthcare provider domain. And if you keep in mind that the healthcare provider domain in the Netherlands is a V3-based messaging, uh, sometimes CDA system, uh, and what have you, uh, you know we have some challenges up there. And they're going to be working uh, on building that in course of this year or next year. bigger uh, part of, of what's going on in the Netherlands is uh, Zorgdomein. Zorgdomein is a company that uh, works on uh, referrals, lab orders and e-consultations. Um, they've just recently upgraded their uh, existing referral stack, I believe it's been going on for like 15 years or so, you guys are up there, um, to a fully fire uh, enabled environment. So they now do e-referrals uh, based on fire. Uh, to, the, to the hospitals from primary care. Um, and the last part, uh, as project wise, is Kopata, which also no great word in, in English, but let's say it's something like connecting language, language to connect with. Um, their primary, their primary uh, user base is in mental health, and they're in the, in the business of serious gaming, um, mostly to help people with um, ASS uh, specific autism syndrome, uh, and they use this. Uh, they use Smart on Fire. Uh, they use um, uh, Fire to do app provisioning with. And when uh, uh, the person in that game is, is getting results and scores and, and answering questions, they actually get the game results back uh, through Fire. So, with all these uh, bigger initiatives. H7 Netherlands and Nictus got together, um, and Nictus is the company that I work for. And we thought, well, what happens if, if fire profiles pop up all over the place and, and companies start building profiles and um, uh, all kinds of initiatives start building profiles, probably duplicating each other, maybe not doing it uh, properly in, in fire, but it works because it's a standard standard. Um, we need something to coordinate that actually comes together. So uh, in, in H7 in Netherlands and Nictis, we actually uh, got together and created a, a fire council and a fire team 
that will allow you to put forward stuff that you have and think is useful, and will validate that against everything we know, um, and make sure that it gets put up to a central place where other people may find it um, and leverage that to build their solutions on. Um, and the central place happens to be Simplifier. So I believe I'm at the end of my time. So I'll leave you with this particular summary. In the Netherlands, we are large-scale investing on Fire SDU3. We do not have plans yet uh, how and when it will go to R4, even though R4 is coming on next year, I think. Um, we have MetMaya for the patients. Uh, we have VZVZ, which is the company behind the National Spine, updating their spine to go with Fire, uh, provide connectivity for that. Uh, we have e-referrals going on with uh, Zorg uh, for primary care, Coppital for mental health, and uh, finally we have HS7 Netherlands trying to keep all the frogs in the, uh, in the basket and uh, making sure that everybody aligns and goes, it goes in the same direction. Thank you. Thanks for letting me talk shortly here about fire activities in Switzerland. Um, we are not that much projects in Switzerland, honestly, because we are building up our electronic health record system based on IAG XTS and uh, CDI documents. So that will keep us up tight on the national level the next three years until everything is connected and maybe then we get back on fire. But um, nevertheless, uh, we have some activities on the national level. We are looking into how we can connect mHealth apps and application into our future electronic health records. We are currently evaluating the Continua guidelines with a focus on fire, how would like you do it in the Nordic countries if we can take that over. On a lower level in HL7 Switzerland, we made a fire working group which meets informally, makes exchanges, about the different projects which are running on and one of the, the radiology group already started profiling I will show you shortly that uh, profile where we use uh, questionnaire and fire resources so uh, even so we are a small country we have 10 participants here from Switzerland so I think slowly slowly the fire gets up in Switzerland um, the projects we have within are uh, coming from companies bottom up or projects which are running. These are on one side a uh, lot of primary systems which connect to each other. So we have one which connected the cloud to a local system where they can enter the information from the cloud inside the system. We have primary systems which have different versions in the market which are looking for a format how to integrate or exchange information between these different versions where they use fire as an internal standard and then we have also um, um, projects for immunizations in Switzerland where all your immunizations are stored and you have clinical decision support so the official exchange is a CDI document, but that is they also make profiles on fires, so they have an interface where they can use fires. So there are a lot of projects going around, also in terms of uh, research. So we have a, a system where there is a secondary use possibility for research, and they are also building this up with the fire interface. The people are also here, I don't know if they are in the room here, but so, uh, yes, Francois is there if you want to talk to him from iData. So they can, you can build apps with their system and they can they use them further. Just two examples. Um, we have a um, need for exchanging referrals and based on forms and didn't find a solution within IAG and HL7. So there was a uh, proposal we were working on how you can exchange forms um, from one provider to another the filled out form and we make profiles profile this on a questionnaire resource package together with a bundle so we have different actors 
questionnaire manager, a receiver, and a filler, and a repository where this form lives. Um, so this project was just specified in this radiology work group, and we tried to bring it to the IH international level. We didn't succeed in the first round now, because you have to go through a, a planning committee and the technical committee, but um, we are going further with it. We have the first prototypes implementing it, and we hope uh, that we can go further with this profile. The second part, we copied a little bit what the German did in a Swiss project, so I don't know if you're familiar, um, to uh, make a current medication of a patient, you hand this over, over a paper from uh, that the pa uh, patient is the one which takes the medication, he gets a current medication list, what he takes, and the information, part of it is then structured. So you have it not only on paper, but a structured version. This was first a proprietary version in Switzerland, uh, it in the project, and we did in the second round, was described this with fire resources, so you can exchange this information with, uh, in a bundle. So this looks like this, you have a bundle with a composition inside and the different information, and you can convert this then to a shortened version for the barcode in the back. So we have a few projects in Switzerland, but not yet on a national level, but I hope we get soon there. So what you're missing now most, the most, is that we uh, can do like the Netherlands did, or like the Germans did, that we have uh, profiles based for the Swiss specific reasons. So this Swiss basic profiling of fire, I hope this will be started next year, or maybe the next year afterwards. Thanks a lot for your attention. Yeah, I'll just give you a quick introduction of uh, what we have done in Germany, just a walkthrough. Um, we found that the uh, German Committee for HL7 Fire about one and a half years ago, um, so the German the HL7 affiliate organization has this technical committee set up. It's uh, me and Stefan who are uh, in charge of that committee. So um, our first uh, interest was to actually get the German community together to see who's doing what with FIRE, who's interested and who would like to participate in creating the, the German uh, base profiles. So um, what we first did was to set up this uh, German stream on Sulip and um, that's pretty much where we do all our discussions. That's our uh, living room basically for the German community. And we're quite happy with the uh, degree of activity that's going on in the past couple of months. So it's, it's become quite active. And um, as you can see, we have some of our streams annotated with, with issue numbers. That's because we are using Simplifier uh, to host our German base profiles. And we use the, um, the Simplifier webhook that enables us... Oops, sorry. Um, that enables us to um, hook our Simplifier repository in with a GitHub repository in the backend. And that's where we keep our track of our issues, which is basically a list of stuff we want to do but didn't get around to do yet. Um, problems we found with our um, with our base profiles, or maybe it, it's even public, uh, people can just add new issues if they have a question or if there's anything unclear or they have suggestions for our base profile. So that's just for our to-do list basically. And um, we then discuss on how, about how to resolve the, the issues that we have um, on Sulip. So we also uh, created a um, implementation guide, like a bit of prose and a bit um, text around how to use these German profiles. And we had a first round of call, uh, call for comments uh, during October, when we um, published that implementation guide and asked people for feedback. The return was a bit thin, but we are hoping for to get better results next time. Um, then we have the medication plan that Oliver already introduced, um, that's a German project currently going on. 
and you've already seen it, it looks kind of like that. We have this paper-based plan that has this barcode in the, in the upper edge, which called a very condensed, ultra-short format of uh, the structured data, which you can then, then transform into a file bundle that can be consumed by um, smartphone applications or anyone who can scan that barcode. And, yeah, it's, we, we have to do it like that because we, we, we don't have the internet in Germany. So. Um, yeah, and that's the um, the other um, simplifier hosted um, implementation guide that we have for Germany right now, which um, describes and profiles the resources used in the medication plan. Yep. That's it. Thank you. So I'm going to talk about some work that's happening with fire in the U.S. realm, and I think today I will be. Not just with myself, but also of, of Wayne. Oh, oh, we have Wayne as well. So, Wayne, if, if you want to come up and talk a bit about uh, a couple of these efforts, that'd be great. So, one large project that started a few years ago is the Argonaut Project. At, at this conference last year, we had Mickey Tripathi talking about uh, the scope of work that's happening in Argonaut. Um, but just as a quick recap, Argonaut is a project, not a whole new organization, but it's a confluence of electronic health record vendors and some of the large academic medical centers in the U.S. that came together with HL7 uh, and brought on subject matter experts as needed to tackle some specific problems. And starting a couple of years ago, in 2015, one of the areas that we focused on in Argonaut was this way of launching apps in SMART. So Argonaut sponsored a security review and brought together a bunch of EHR vendors to do a, a review of their own implementation and brought back a lot of advice and feedback that helped us make the specification better. Uh, and over time, that specification is now feeding into a standardization process that's happening at the H07 uh, international level through FIRE. Uh, the next year, Argonaut took on a way of working with what's called the Common Clinical Data Set. This is a limited set of data that is defined as part of the US regulations in meaningful use. It's a summary data set for medications and problems and lab tests and vital signs and allergies and so on. It's a list of about 20 different data types that are defined. And the Argonaut group came together and said, great, how can we represent those 20 different data types in FIRE? And so that uh, began as a set of Argonaut profiles in FIRE in 2016. And then in, over the course of 2017, that has fed into a U.S. realm level effort in, in FIRE to define a set of what are called U.S. core profiles. And I'll show you a little bit more about those. Uh, more broadly, Argonaut has been taking on you know, additional scope. At the beginning of each year, the group gets together and says, what are the areas we want to focus on this year? So in 2016, there was also a focus on provider directories. In 2017, there's been a focus on scheduling and on clinical decision support. Uh, and we're just in the process of figuring out what's in scope for 2018. So people are coming together with proposals this year to, to think about uh, what's up next. But that's the basic flow here is Argonaut has done some work to develop profiles, get people thinking about these issues, and then the work that comes out of that process is feeding into the standardization process through HL7. Uh, a couple of words on the US Core implementation guide. So there's a link to where these guides live in the HL7 uh, fire specification here. But the, the basic idea is this work defines what are called the minimum conformance requirements for accessing patient data consistent with meaningful use. So there's a, a link back to some of the Argonaut work that fed into this. But these profiles are a standalone set of fire profiles uh, that are developed on top of the STU3 resources. And maybe you can come in here and drill into the individual profiles, but you'll see there's about 20 of them here in this list. And if you want to know, for example, how immunizations work, uh, you, can, you can drill in and understand uh, exactly which fields have been profiled inside of these resources. Uh, most of these profiles are locking down things like the vocabularies and code systems that are used to represent these resources. Uh, another project I want to draw attention to is one that I've been working on personally. Uh, this is a project that's been funded by the National Institutes of Health called SYNC for Science. It's all about helping patients share their own data with researchers. So I'll give you a quick plug. I'm going to talk about this in detail in a session first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, but the basic idea is anybody who's building a research study can write an app that requests access to data. And then if a patient wants to, they can use a patient portal from inside of an existing provider system to approve that kind of sharing. And if a patient makes that decision to approve, 
then the data can flow into the research app. And again, it's using these US core profiles, it's using the smart app launch specification. It's really a use case building on top of those same technologies and standards that uh, I've already mentioned. So I'm gonna pass the microphone over to Wayne to introduce another project that's coming up online. Sure. Uh, uh, Josh already mentioned the work that's been done on Argonaut with the US core. And so there's been a recent initiative in the US to establish a Argonaut for another community, which is the, the payer community. Uh, within the US, the, uh, there is a law that was passed a few years ago that really was trying to change the way we do reimbursements for care, which historically were done on a pay-for-procedure basis, which tends to be very costly over time, and cost of healthcare has become quite an issue in the United States. Um, there's been a, there's being a transition that's moved towards value-based, what's called value-based care, or more payment for outcome, sort of encourage like doing the most effective types of treatments to apply. And this is changing the way that insurers and other payer organizations would handle um, the way that they do reimbursements. Now, in order to do that based on outcome, they need access to data, clinical data, which is not something they look at historically. It's all procedural information they pay them. And FIRE is really the only way to do that. So there's a beginning initiative right now to establish a similar project to Argonaut with the payer community, working with the EHR community to learn how to have a common approach to using clinical data to measure these outcomes in value-based care. Uh, and Chuck Jaffe's around here. He knows a lot about it. He's the HL7 CEO. If you see him, you can ask for more questions about that. And the other thing I added briefly, since we do have a couple of minutes, is a few other things going on right now. Uh, Graham mentioned in his um, What's New update yesterday uh, that um, the, the Office of the National Coordinator has provided some generous support to the fire community. And these are some of the things we're doing with that funding in the course of the coming year. There's a major initiative, I think there was a bit of a feather topic yesterday, apparently, on bulk data access and using analytics, trying to get data from multiple patients at a time in order to do things like uh, research analyses and population health and other things. Uh, we're doing a lot of infrastructure improvements, which should help everyone, on how we build and release the fire specification and how we connect it with registry.fire.org. Uh, we're moving our tracking system as well as our balloting system to JIRA, which we hope will make it be much more efficient and easy to use and more transparent than the way things are doing. We're still doing a lot of stuff on spreadsheets now. Um, the, the work within uh, HL7, there's the organization on detailed clinical models called CIMI. We're putting together these, uh, you know, like archetypes, these detailed models. We're working to integrate those better within the fire specification. And a big thing within the HL7 community is getting control over all the uh, terminology resources that we use with all our standards, including FHIR, and putting together a, um, uh, a system to do that, which will be available uh, by the end of next year. The last thing I'm just going to mention briefly is uh, my own personal hobby within the FHIR community, which is trying to bring the benefits of FHIR to the uh, areas of clinical research and regulatory processes. That's my background from 25 years. And we've made good progress with the consortium of the pharmaceutical industry and some 20 major companies are working together adopting how to use FHIR to get health data to use and drive research. Um, within, the, within Europe, the European Medicines Agency uh, has gotten, is uh, actually working on now on a representation of FHIR for what's called the Identification of Medicinal Products Standard, an ISO standard for how they register a contact that not just the names but basically all the information about a drug product including the substances that are in place with significant uh, potential safety implications and so I'm very encouraged about their jumping into it and a lot of uh, also interest from both the EMA and the FDA and fire analytics for drug safety we'll be talking about those things in more detail at the fire death days coming up in Boston in June So fire in Canada has been a bit slower uh, than uptake in the U.S. because we were kind of hung over from version three adoption. Uh, we spent about one and a half billion dollars rolling in version three across all of our jurisdictions, and of course they all did it slightly differently, and they can't talk to each other. It's awesome. Um, but uh, the one jurisdiction was so inept that they didn't actually get version three into place. Uh, and now they're adopting fire like crazy, so it turned out to actually work out well for them, which is kind of sad, but that's how life works sometimes. 
Uh, we did have some early adoption of Unifier. Obviously, the Happy interface came out of uh, University Health Network in Ontario, uh, and that's gone over very well. Uh, and I got hooked very early as well. Um, we started dealing with fire in earnest in Canada in about 2015. Uh, we had our first fire conference called Fire North, and we had about 50 people show up. Uh, the next year we had a little over 100 people show up, and last year we had over 200 people show up, so definitely wrapping up, which is a good thing. Um, and we now have an official fire working group uh, within uh, the Sanders Collaborative, which encompasses HL7 and IHE and a number of other organizations in Canada that all work within uh, Canada Health Infoys umbrella. Uh, and after forming, we've become pretty much the most active standards group doing development work in Canada, which is fun. A uh, number of different projects. One is focused on use cases. What is the business case for doing fire? Uh, and they pretty much complete their work. They put together a way to work. And if you're interested in that, I can get you access to that. Uh, we have an architecture group that's done things like what is the URI strategy? Uh, how do we manage URIs versus OIDs? And how do we map? And how do we decide what URIs to use when and where? Uh, we have a tooling group uh, that's been looking at what sort of tools uh, do we need to have uh, in Canada and how can we support and integrate uh, work that's happening elsewhere. Uh, we have a number of jurisdictions that either have uh, or are working towards fire-based client and provider registries. Uh, so we have another group focused on that. We have another group focused on e-referrals. Uh, no implementations of that, but lots of really good analysis of requirements uh, and how fire can be used in different workflows uh, from the document-based approach, messaging approach, etc. Uh, and we just started a new one on Smart and CDS hooks, uh, recognizing that those are going to be fairly important technologies in Canada. Uh, and we want to figure out how to leverage those. And you can go and see information about all of these uh, on the different ways website. I'm interested in that. In terms of actual fire implementations, uh, in 2016 we had uh, in Ontario uh, an immunization <coughs> uh, solution that uses fire based data. Uh, in 2017 we had a number of other things, uh, each driving solution and messaging based. Uh, rolled out in both Ontario and Alberta, uh, an e-consult uh, process that includes uh, the ability to share uh, information between practitioners, client practitioners and health technology, etc. Uh, we also have uh, both uh, provider and uh, organization and patient uh, registries up and run in Ontario and Alberta, we don't have any significant use yet. Uh, and lab interface uh, up and running in Ontario as well. Uh, BC, um, which is the other end of the country, uh, has been working on the ability to convert uh, lab reports uh, and other types of clinical documents uh, into FHIR and has those around in repositories. At a national level, uh, we just recently stood up uh, our own FHIR registry uh, based on Simplifier. We also have a national terminology services uh, that set up uh, without using Fire, but they're now starting to introduce Fire into that. Uh, so you can at least download the content as Fire JSON, uh, and we're working with InfoWay to turn that into a full-blown terminology service that you can actually search against using uh, the rest of that kind of stuff. And we've also been maintaining uh, and continuing to build a list of mappings between all of the OIDs that we had created for version 3 and what the corresponding URIs for those should be so the system that we're starting to need to interact between the version 3 world and the fire world and the mechanism for doing that. That's Ken. is whether we have URIs for all of our OIDs or just some. Uh, the answer is some. Uh, it's sort of uh, on a as-needed basis. We uh, create them. Uh, maybe at some point somebody will have the bandwidth to just go through and finish them all off, but nobody's had that. Okay. I think I was last. 